Yeah. Thank you, Jake. Uh, did the U.S. Uh, in, did you in your meetings provide any U.S. intelligence about Simor's whereabouts? So, I think at the root of this question is a story that is just completely wrong. That somehow we were withholding information from the Israeli government relating to Sinwar or any other Hamas terrorist who was responsible for October 7th. The fact is that the United States has provided an intense range of assets and capabilities and expertise, which I got briefed on while I was in Israel to help hunt down and deliver justice to Sinwar and everyone else who brought about October 7th. We have been doing that day in and day out for as long as this conflict has been going on, and we will do it until the job is done. It's not tied or conditioned on anything else. It is not limited. We are not holding anything back. We are providing every asset, every tool, every capability. And frankly, we have some of the best there is in the business on this, and they are hard at work with the Israeli government to help them try to achieve their ultimate objective here. So I didn't have anything myself to come at because we've already flowed and supplied everything on a perpetual, ongoing basis through the work that we're doing on the ground right there in Israel, and we'll continue to do well, I that. Ask the senior it's administration official has suggested, uh, which I believe is the administration's view, that until <coughs> Hamas is fully held to account, that the peace process and any two-state solution could not go forward. Uh, do you see Israel being able to deliver on that? And then do you see Israel accepting a two-state solution? So I, you know, I'd have to refer you to the Israeli government about their position with respect to the future of a uh, Palestinian state or the Palestinian question. I can just state to you what the U.S. position is, and it's been longstanding. President Biden believes that a two-state solution that guarantees Israel's security and also a future of dignity and security for the Palestinian people is the best way to bring about long-term security and stability for everyone in the region, Israelis, Palestinians, and Arabs. And he has talked about a regional vision of Israel actually being integrated with all of the moderate Arab states in an architecture that can deliver regional stability. And I was in Saudi Arabia talking to the Crown Prince about that exact vision this weekend, and you saw public statements from him about what is possible if Israel moves down that path. So that's a conversation we'll continue to have with the Israeli government. In the meantime, what we will do is work to ensure the enduring defeat of Hamas and a day after in Gaza that involves governance and security not provided by Hamas but by an alternative that ultimately gets us on a credible pathway to that two-state solution that President Biden has talked about. Okay. Yeah. Um, about the three nations, European nations, recognizing a Palestinian state, uh, is the U.S. concerned that this is just the tip of the iceberg, that we're now at a point where other nations over U.S. objections will uh, recognize Palestine? Each country is entitled to make its own determinations, but the U.S. position on this is clear. President Biden, as I just said, has been on the record supporting a two-state solution. He has been equally emphatic on the record that that two-state solution should be brought about through direct negotiations through the parties, not through unilateral recognition. That's a principled position that we have held on a consistent basis. We'll communicate that to our partners around the world, and we'll see what unfolds. Uh, yeah. Just a sort of quick follow-up on that. Um, how concerned are you about Israel's growing sort of diplomatic isolation? And do you view it that way? And what does this also mean for you know any deal, uh, <clears throat> any Saudi deal to recognize Israel going forward? I mean, does this diminish the chances of that? I think it's a fair question. As, as a country that stands strong in defense of Israel in international forums like the United Nations, we certainly have seen a growing chorus of voices, including voices that had previously been in support of Israel drift in another direction. That is of concern to us because we do not believe that that contributes to Israel's long-term security or vitality. And so that's something that we discussed with the Israeli government and something that we believe that uh, a strategic approach to defeating Hamas, protecting civilians, surging humanitarian assistance, and then pursuing that vision of regional integration I just talked about will put Israel in the best stead uh, to engage countries around the world and revitalize a lot of the partnerships and friendships that have been a source of great strength for Israel over time and can be again.